show here with Soldier Gaming here on the Weekly Spirit. It's been a while. I have theme music. I have a brand. Uh, yeah, Total Justice is the name of the channel. Weekly Spirit is a part of this channel. It is not the channel as a whole. So I made a whole thing. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the, the little nice little intro I made. So where have I been? Uh, I have gone dark. There's like a lot of stuff that happened. The long and short of it. I'm a part of a Ghostbuster group where I live. Last month was October. I don't think I need to say too much. I was in event after event after event after event. And that kind of kept me away from doing some video stuff. Um, I got to do a couple small videos uh, with uh, Ty's House of Cards for My Hero Academia. Uh, I tried to keep up the best I could, but just overall I got swamped. Now that's November. I'm going to have some more time. But uh, a lot of stuff from Battle Spirit Saga finally dropped. And I wanted to give my thoughts. The community has already been on top of this stuff. Um, and I'm very thankful that the community has been carrying on. I'm sorry I could not be a part of the initial wave. Uh, but I also wanted to collect as much as I could because I do have some, some thoughts on this. Um, some good. Uh, some very concerned already right out the gate. Uh, I'm definitely going to enjoy this game. I'm going to give it a shot. And it looks like I will be able to build one of my decks that I pilot uh, over in Battle Spirits Connected Battlers, which is still giving me fits, but I love that game so much. It me, teaches me the game. Um, so we will just dive right into it. Uh, we're going to go over some cards first, and then I'm going to give my thoughts on what's going on with the game and how the game's proceeding, or has yet to proceed, but... Uh, some concerns at when it proceeds. So first off, we got Blazing Boar, uh, red units. Uh, a lot of the red stuff got spoiled right away. So this gives us what the new uh, card format looks like. I really dig it. Um, we have a reduction cost of one, a cost of four, abilities with level one, two, and three, one summon when a red spirit is uh, select a red spirit from the trash, turn it back to hand. That seems pretty nice for a three drop. Uh, power's a little low, but this is the first set. So, you know, um, <clears throat> I was not expecting to have the usual number games right out the bat in set one. Uh, so being a level three for four cores, but it being only 5k power seems super low. But this is a decent utility card because it lets me, lets anybody, uh, from the trash, uh, get something back from the trash. So let's see toolbox a little from the trash. Um, it's okay. We got uh, Dragno Guard, uh, low cost of three with a reduction cost of three. Uh, level one and level three abilities. Uh, apparently, he does not get this skill on level two. That's interesting. Uh, when the spirit attacks, uh, when the spirit destroys. Oh, the ability is during one of the spirit attacks. When the spirit destroys one of your opponent's spirits by comparing battle power, select one of your opponent's nexuses and destroy it. So it gets this ability at level one or level three. I'm kind of wondering why it doesn't get it at level two, but, you know, eh. Um, nexus destruction, always good. Can't argue with that. Uh, find it a little weird is giving that as a level one ability, considering you're only going to be a 1k unit at that point. But hey, you know, we, that's what magics and nexuses are for. Moving on over, we got Moonbow Dragon, cost of four, reduction cost of three, level one, two, and three flash. So it's got some flash timing, it's got awakening. You can remove any number of cores from any other spirits and place it onto the spirit, and one destroyed. When destroyed effects are not triggered uh, by this effect. It was worded a little weird. You may remove any number of cores from your other spirits and place it onto spirit. Okay, so it's got awakening. That's fine. When destroyed effects are not triggered by this effect. Oh, okay. Sorry, it took me a moment because the wording just did not cycle through my head. So if we suck off cores from other units and they have one destroyed abilities, they just don't trigger. Okay. That's a little bit better. This one has better power, though. Like, uh, level one, 
Uh, just being a flat out 3K seems pretty good. Four cores for 6K is a little steep. Seven cores for 8K, I do not agree with at all. But, you know, again, I have to remind myself every single time. This is set one. Uh, we got the magic skill or magic card of double draw. Um, we got uh, not Brave Soul. Uh, the worm from uh, Heroes on this card. So maybe we get some Heroes cards in this thing. So it's got uh, main draw two cards and main flash. Select one spirit, give it uh, two, uh, 2k BP uh, during this turn with flash timing. Uh, cost of four, but deduction of two. Draw two cards. And then uh, you can also trigger the flash timing. I dig it. Dragno Shock Troop. Cost of two, reduction of one. Uh, level one, two, and three flash. Uh, we can also awaken. And it's just pretty much got the same ability as Moonbow Dragon. Uh, you can suck cores to vacuum cores to this unit, and short abilities on other units don't trigger. Um, I guess we'll use this as a blocker. Uh, so just like instant power up. Four cores for 5k is not too bad. Three cores for 3k is not bad. Seems fine to me. Uh, Rain Needle. This is literally just a generic card. Uh, one cost dragon with the cost reduction cost one. So basically free. Free spirit. Um, battle power super low. This dude is pretty much just going to be your blocker. Like, you're not going to commit too much to him. He's essentially a free card. He just prevents a free damage if uh, white doesn't exhaust him or if something else doesn't happen. Um, I don't know how susceptible he's going to be to white and to purple since, you know, white just bounces stuff back like no one's business and purple drains off cores. And if your max core value is three. But as I just said, he's a free unit, basically. So free unit, dump a single core on him, block or, you know. Let them waste something on him. Uh, Dragron Trooper? Dragron? Dragron. That, that's a name. Uh, another free unit? Uh, level 1 and level 2. When he attacks, he gains 2k. Uh, so for 1, he becomes a 3k, essentially, while attacking. And for 2 cores, he becomes a 5k. Not bad. Um, I am noticing the Samurai slash Chinese Warlord motif, and I'll go into that a little bit later. Dragnoid Captain. So he's not a Dragron, but a Dragnoid. Okay, sure. Um, one cost unit, basically. Cost of three, reduction of two. Uh, level one's a 3k for one, 4k for two. 7k for 4, that, that's a bit better. That's a bit better in terms of his powers. Uh, no actual skill, he's just vanilla, so um, he's another blocker, basically. A cheap blocker. And then the quality kind of dips because of the scans, so my apologies there. Period with Thunder Dragon, Seagorm. Uh, 6 difficulty, or 6 casting costs for reduction to 3. Uh, level 1, 2, and 3 with Confront. So I guess Confront, yep, Confront right here. So this is the U.S. version of Clash. Uh, this is basic Clash. We do not have uh, Super Clash and Ultra Clash yet. Uh, when the Spirit attacks, Clash. Uh, level 2 and level 3 during this turn. Uh, all Spirits with Awaken gain Clash or Confront. I'm going to say Clash every single time, I swear. Um, level 1 for 4k, level 2 uh, for 3 cores gets us 6, 5 cores gets us 9. That's pretty decent uh, for a potential 3 three casting cost character. Uh, we can at least make him a 4k or very easily a 6k. Uh, he's got Confront. Got to remember to say Confront every single time. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Uh, what do we need to play? Uh, I do realize I did miss like two cards. I missed the Nexus and I missed the Magic. But uh, there are some rule changes with this game. Uh, this is not traditional Battle Spirits. Um, right now, 
in set one, there's only three sets of types of cards, spirit, nexus, and magic, meaning we don't have braids. Um, we don't have braids. We don't have brave spirits. Uh, your deck is 50 cards. It's not 40. We can have up to four copies of a card, and traditional battle spirits is only three copies. Uh, we do have the soul core, uh, which I will talk about more a little bit down the road. Uh, we also have a mulligan rule in the game. So, uh, starting with player one, each player declares whether they will mulligan. Read your other hand. Players can choose a mulligan and can return their entire hand to the bottom of the deck, then draw four new cards from the top of the deck, then reshuffle the deck the same way described as in step two. Players who do not choose a mulligan draw an additional card, making their starting hand five cards. So, you, we get a mulligan rule, which, um, you know... I don't know, because I quit Digimon a while ago. I don't know if Digimon actually picked up the Mulligan rule, but it sounds like they listened to the people playing Digimon and actually went and incorporated it into Battle Spirits. So, we like that. Um, I don't remember if I put the board game board or not, but the game also does have burst monsters right away. So, um, from what I understand, and the group was very, very vocal about this, is that it looks like set one is a mixture of cards ranging from set one to set 43. Set 43 starts a new chapter. I think it's called the Glitter Chapter, which I think is after the Warring State. So this is just after Burning Soul, which we'll talk about more in a bit. Uh, but this offers a wide, way, bleh, wide range of things that we can do in the game. We can burst, uh, we have awakening, we have clash, we have the soul core. Um, we get more cards, uh, more copies of cards, um, and a mulligan. I think those things make this a much different game than original Battle Spirits. Uh, I don't know when they're planning on adding in Braves, um, but Three types of cards and the changes they made seem to make this just a whole new ball game, especially for even the most experienced Battle Spirits players. Um, they've never had a mulligan before. Uh, 50 card decks means more room and more op chances for optimization and more rooms for experimentations. Um, four copies of the cards, meaning that they can um, up consistency of the cards they need more often. Uh, the Mulligan Road just, like, makes decks just nuts in this game. I can't tell you the number of times I wish I could Mulligan in Connected Battlers. Um, yeah. Like, a lot of rules change, and this is like a whole new ball game. So, where are my concerns in this? If you're... We're on the screen that shows my biggest concern. Bandai right now has probably three very popular games. I'm not going to say most popular. But um, if you notice, uh, three of these things are multi-million dollar franchises. Uh, and Battle Spirits is in Japan, but Battle Spirits is very niche in where it is. Digimon is, uh, Digimon's been around since I was a little kid. One Piece is around since I was in college. Dragon Ball was around since I was a small child. Uh, Bandai is essentially competing with itself. Um, Digimon is already very, very popular. Like, extremely popular right now. And Dragon Ball, despite the fact that it has its promo issues, uh, where promo cards are like the key to your deck, and I think that's being resolved, it's still, dra still Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is a household name for almost any anime kid or any kid aware of anime. And then there's One Piece. One Piece just is going to be starting soon. And honestly, that may overtake everything uh, that Digimon and Dragon Ball has set up. Am I saying it's absolutely going to? No. Is there a possibility? Yes. So Bandai is already competing with itself. Um, and, you know, in this landscape where we already got Magic, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, Vanguard, White Shorts, Digimon, uh, Dragon Ball, and soon One Piece, uh, Battle Spirits is going to have a hard time competing. Um, 
There's just too much out there right now. Am I saying it's not going to do well? Absolutely not. I think everybody will flock to it. It's If it keeps people, it's going to keep people. It will probably keep me. I am so far pretty much a pretty dedicated white player. I love playing mechs, uh, which is something I am reason why I'm really not playing Carpet Vanguard right now. Uh, Standard still has no decks, and I cling to my metal board deck in premium uh, like I have a death grip on it because metal board is my favorite uh, uh, sub, uh, sub arc or sub genre of Dimension Police. But in Battle Spirits, I'm going to play the mech decks. I'm going to play every mech deck there possibly is. And probably also the dinosaur deck because I'm a huge Tachikaze player. But, you know, that's you're there. But again, we have to think about this. This is a Bandai game. 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 Uh, if you go over to Wasi's channel, he just like a month ago released the top thing. Top Trading Guard games for summer of TCG. Uh, Digimon was on there. Dragon Ball was on there. One Piece is yet to show up. When One Piece shows up, it's going to be in the top 10. And then in spring of uh, 2023, we're getting Battle Spirits. Um, we're really going to have to push hard. And Bandai knows it's competing with, all of it, with itself because it's going to be putting out money tournaments. I mean, the very first thing, even before we saw cards, we had $1 million cash prize outright. We had the announcement of this is a competitive card game right out the gate. So far, even before we get to the million dollar prize season, we're being offered a little over a quarter of a million dollars in uh, U.S. pricing for using of starter and booster packs in, uh, to get a start of the competitive season. Uh, there's going to be events that will be awarding prizes, and like they're really, really pushing this competitive angle because they have to do something, or Battle Spirits will be eaten alive, guys. Like the market is just so saturated with TCGs. Uh, not to mention, Magic is still doing its thing. I mean, the other non Bandai games are still going to do their thing. Um, but, I mean, essentially Bandai understands it's competing with itself and is making the distinction that Battle Spirits is the competitive trading card game as opposed to Digimon and Dragon Ball and One Piece. This is what they're using to set it apart from the other two games. Um, will it work? I don't know, honestly. I really don't like this will definitely bring the top players from other games over for a brief period of time. And I don't know what the stability will look like. Um, you know, the ones that are going to be winning money will probably stick around to try and continue to win money. The ones that don't win money, if they don't like how the game continues, they're just going to hop back to their other games. I mean, we're going to get Yu-Gi-Oh players, Magic players, possibly Pokemon players. Because we're fronting, as the game, we are fronting large cash prize right out the gate. And, you know, that just brings all sorts of players to the game. Um, I don't want to say anyone's bad, but, you know, money brings out pe money brings all sorts of people. We'll just say that. <laughs> so how does this stack up? How does Battle Spirits... Battle Spirit Saga, get a foothold. Well, we need an anime. We need an anime that shows the game and it's, what I want to say, it's probably its best format. Uh, Heroes was definitely the second runner-up on this. And surprisingly, if you go to YouTube, guys, um, nearly all the Battle Spirits animes you can still find in some way, shape, or form, be it the 15-minute clips, but you can find almost every series but Burning Soul. Burning Soul has been completely taken off YouTube. Like, you can't find it. I mean, if you look hard enough on the internet, you can find anything. But if you go on YouTube and look up Burning Souls, you won't be able to find an ep full episode. If I go look up Battle Spirit Heroes, I can go find an episode. If I find Battle Spirit Shonen, 
Shoman Tapa. I can find it. If I can find the Geki Dan thing, I can find it. I can't find Burning Souls. Which leads me to believe that Burning Souls is going to be the anime uh, that anchors the card game. It's very straightforward. We don't have the contract monsters. We don't have the uh, Tensei, the Rebirth uh, monsters quite yet in the anime. We have very straightforward, much like this game. It's going to be very straightforward. We get Bursts. Eventually we get Braves. Um, we just get Spirits, Magic, Nexuses. And then as the game continues, we'll get Braves and then other stuff. But Burning Soul seems to be what the anime, by my guess, will be what they use to promote the game with that will be put on YouTube again or put on um, Disney, I guess, will be where it may go. They still do anime, I think. Inazuma 11 may still be on there. I don't know. JetX, Cartoon Network, some streaming service will probably have Burning Soul. Um, this is this is what I think how the thing, a card game like ours needs an anime series. Vanguard has an anime series. All White Shorts is based off an anime series. Uh, Buddy Fight had an anime series. And the moment the anime series stopped is when the the game just, like, started to go downhill. After Gargantua, the finale of uh, the final season where it was Gargad and dude's kid, main character's kid with the time jump and whatnot. I still don't think the gal should have married Pariko. I don't know why that was a thing. But I, I digress. But... This is what I want to say. This is going to be our series. It will definitely uh, get noticed from the new players, from the younger players. Uh, it'll help teach them because Battle Spirits is very, the Battle Spirits anime is very, very good at teaching them. I have seen all of Burning Soul, all of Heroes, and all of uh, Sword Eyes. The anime is good is very very intuitive about teaching how to play the game and easing uh players in to new mechanics when they're introduced in the series but i mean this is just conjecture on my part this whole anime speculation i just believe because we are stopping right after the warning state set is where we're gonna this is how we get it and you know we're already seeing cards that look pretty samurai so, you know, it just may be a thing. Uh, other news that we got, uh, we got the booster boxes. Uh, we got a core set, which will give us some stuff. And we got the starter decks. Oh, notice this all says spring. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say April, maybe mid-April. I'm fairly certain I saw April somewhere. But, um... I'm definitely going to be getting the white starter deck because that's already armed machine. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be going after that. Um, boxes, uh, $4.99 a pack, a 12-pack. Uh, these are like the Digimon boxes because there's 12 cards in a pack. means 24 packs. So, you know, 272 types of cards. Woof. So we get uh, commons. We'll have hollow versions of everything. One top rare, one special rare, 12 X rares, uh, 24 rares, 32 uncommons, and 68 uncommons per box. So that's pretty decent. Um, I'm not sure what a Battle Spirit Saga core set is. Um, but, you know, I'm down. Uh, promo card of the same type. Two, two booster packs. Okay, so it's kind of just like a, uh, specialty, uh, specialty pack box. Like an upgrade kit. So, you know, there's that. Um, guys, this is my thoughts. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little, uh, rant of mine. I want this game to succeed wholeheartedly. I really, really do. I can't wait to play with you guys. Uh, I can't wait for tournaments to start up. 
Um, I'll be out there with armed machine or anything white with mechs on it. Hopefully I'll be able to build something very close to it. My greatest hope in this game was that we will be able to get collaborative sets. I would love a common Rider set. I will play a Fize deck until uh, it is no longer legal. But uh, guys, if you like this, please subscribe, like the video, ring the bell. Do that stuff. Leave comments. I would love talking to you guys. It has been my pleasure to be with you guys on this one. And thank you so much. I'll see you next video.